This video is about three laws of planetary motion, the famous three Kepler's laws. But before we get to Kepler, let's talk about Tycho de Brahe. Now, Tycho de Brahe was a Danish astronomer who lived in the 16th century, and he was really good at taking regular measurements of the positions of the planets uh, and the, the celestial bodies, stars, and the moon. He just loved to take measurements, and, and uh, he had some really precise instruments for his time. And even every evening when there was clear sky, he would take these measurements and write them down. And after some time, I think, you know, he collected these for 20 years. But after, I, I think that after you know, a few years of taking the measurements, he started thinking what to do with those measurements. He wasn't really good at mathematics. And he himself could not, you know, figure out much from the data that he collected. So he hired um, a, I want to say, young mathematician. Um, I'm not sure how young Kepler was, but Johannes Kepler was about 20 years younger uh, than Tycho de Brahe. And Brahe um, hired uh, Kepler to basically look at his data and and see if he can figure out you know something out of the numbers that he that he had. Um, I think he soon soon he he saw Brahe saw that that Kepler was uh, good at what he uh, does and. Uh, I think maybe he, he became jealous of Kepler. The two of them really didn't get along very well, and, and Brahe withheld some important data from, from Kepler so that Kepler could not finish his work. Um, I don't know what, what their deal was, but after Brahe had died, Kepler was finally able to get his hands on the, the final piece of data from, he, from which, uh, you know, after he, he, he looked at it and he did some calculations, he crunched the numbers, he was able to figure out three rules uh, by which the planets, the celestial bodies, seem to be orbiting or, or moving through space. And um, these are the famous three Kepler's laws of, of planetary motion. <clears throat> and um, the PhD simulation, gravity and orbits, is really good at basically de demonstrating these three laws of planetary motion. So here uh, is a screen of the PHET simulation gravity and orbit. This is the second tab. So if you open the simulation, there are two tab tabs. Uh, the second one to scale is where I'm right now. And uh, you can set up different scenarios, scenarios of planets or moons and satellites orbiting uh, the Earth or orbiting the Sun. Right now, here I have a small Earth in the center, and I have the Moon. Um, I changed the orbit, though, so it's not set up uh, as before. Just to, to show you the first law, a little more exaggerated. So let's go quickly to, through the three, three Kepler's laws. The first law basically states that planets don't move, or satellites don't move around uh, planets this could this doesn't have to be planet or I mean a satellite is a general term this could be just a rock moving around a bigger bigger rock in space uh, under the influence of gravity so there you can see the moon in this case orbiting the earth but this is not how the the actual moons orbit around the earth it looks like this is a little exaggerated ellipse uh, which leads us to the first Kepler's uh, law let me show you here the path and the past and the the law states that planets don't move around the sun or that uh, you know satellites don't move around um, these bodies in space whatever they're orbiting in circular orbits but they're moving in elliptical orbits now uh, in general a circle is a, a special type of an ellipse so you know the the moon's orbit around the earth is much less elliptical than this one that you can see here. Um, it looks very much like, like a circle, although it's not a perfect circle. But in general, planets move around the sun and moons around planets in elliptical orbits, of which circle is just one special case. With, you know, whatever it's the sun or the earth, whatever the, the satellite is orbiting, that planet, that, that mass is in one of the two foci of that, of that ellipse. So that's the first law. The second law, and the second and the third law can be stated in different ways, but 
the simplest way of stating the second Kepler's law is basically that when the, the satellite is far away from the planet, it moves slow, and when it is close to the planet, it moves fast. So you can see that the moon, when it's far, is moving relatively slow, and when it's coming close, it, it moves much faster. That's what the second law states. <coughs> Excuse me. And the, the third uh, law is basically just a mathematical description of the motion. It's very interesting. Basically, it states that there is a certain relationship between the average orbital radius, you know, how far the moon is, and how long it takes the moon to orbit the Earth, or how far a satellite is from the body that it orbits, and the time, the orbital period, uh, the time it takes to go around. And the third uh, Kepler's law basically states that the square of the orbital period is proportional to the cube of the average orbital distance. Let's say that again. The square of the period is proportional to the cube of the average orbital distance. So if I take basically average of the largest distance and, and smallest distance that it gets to, I average those and I cube that value and I measure how long it takes for the moon to go around or the satellite to go around. Uh, that's my period. If I square that period and I cube the average distance, those two are related through each other through a, a constant. And um, the the cool thing is that um, this law um, is applicable to any body of mass m. So you know when you when you want to let's say figure out a mass of some object in space and you see some satellite going around it and you can measure how long it takes the satellite and how far this satellite is you can actually calculate the mass of the object that it's that it's um, orbiting um, when when was this when when Russians um, released their first uh, satellite the Sputnik you know and the whole world was at awe and uh, Americans were really shocked you know the Russians are uh, ahead of them in the in the um, in the space race, so to say, uh, and uh, the American president at the time, he wanted to know, you know, what it is that they sent out, uh, how big the the body is, you know, is it is it a one kilogram uh, satellite that the Russians sent out, or is this a one hundred kilogram or a thousand kilogram uh, body moving there? Of course, it would make a big difference you know, if they can put a one kilogram body on the orbit compared to a one thousand kilogram body orbit. It would tell them how far ahead Russians were in, in uh, rocket technology, for example, in the satellite technology. And his advisors um, basically told uh, the American president that there is no way to tell the mass of the satellite. And that's right, because in order to figure out the mass of that satellite, you would have to send another body orbiting the satellite, and you would have to measure the orbiting period and the distance in which your the satellite would be traveling around that Russian satellite, and only then, from those two values, from the distance from and from the um, from uh, the the period, you can then find out the mass. Because the mass has to do with the constant, the constant that relates the period and the average orbital distance. So again, the the third Kepler's planetary Kepler's law of planetary motion states that the square of the orbital period is proportional to the cube of the average orbital distance. <clears throat> and uh, another cool thing is that Kepler had no idea, you know, why satellites travel according to these three laws. He didn't know why it's it's uh, an elliptical path, not a circular path. And he didn't know why is that the 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 satellites move faster when they're closer and slow when they're further away. Um, he just saw that that's how they behave. He saw it from the observations, from the numbers, but he had absolutely no idea why this is happening this way. Um, and then when Newton came around, and uh, you know, from just simply setting up Newton's law of gravity, and you set it equal, basically, the, what is the the force that's providing the centripetal force for this orbital motion here? It is the gravitational force. So if you mathematically set that Newton's gravitational law to um, to or Newton's gravitational force, if you equal it to the centripetal force mv squared over r, and then if you substitute um, basically for the velocity, just you know, take a circular orbit uh, 2 pi r, 
uh, and divide it by the orbital period t and call it the, the orbital velocity. If you substitute it into that equation, you can quickly derive Kepler's third law. From Newton's law of gravity, you can derive Kepler's third law. Um, also, the first law, you know, I mean, take a stone, take a stone and throw it up or throw up anything in the air. And you will see that it is getting higher and higher. It's getting slower and slower. And as it comes closer and closer to the ground, it's it's uh, it's getting faster and faster. And it's a, I mean, if you throw something in the air, you can see that it's an elliptical path. So Newton figured out that these satellites are nothing else, or you can create a, an artificial satellite just by throwing a stone or something really, really fast, high up in the atmosphere, or above the atmosphere, so that you would escape the uh, the friction forces. So you go go up high, high up on a mountain and, and throw a, a stone, shoot a cannon really, really fast, and if you, if you can shoot it fast enough, then that cannonball can become a satellite. And it's basically constantly falling under the influence of gravity down. Um, so with Newton, when I have now at least a little bit of understanding why is it that these planets or these satellites move like this, um, of course, we really don't know why gravity behaves the way it does. We, we know uh, very little about the force of gravity. Um, it's it's still kind of a mystery to us um, what gravity really is uh, because we don't really know well what mass is and, and obviously we can see that gravity depends on mass we don't have a very good hold on what mass is I guess now with the Higgs boson that was found out they think that they know it much better than, than before and maybe they do um, but gravity is still not very well understood understood force so there you go three laws of Kepler three Kepler's laws of planetary motion